the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. I welcome all of you to celebrate the Eucharist on the 14th Sunday of Ordinary Time. At times we all go through life burdensome, and Jesus today in the Gospel invites us to come with our burdens and find rest in Him. I hope this time of prayer, of uh, offering this sacrifice will be a time that we experience that rest that we long in our own lives. Let us bring our burdens to the Lord as we now ponder, particularly the burdens of sins that worry us. May the Lord give us a rest from those things that can put us down. You were sent to heal the contract of heart, Lord of mercy. Lord, have mercy. He came to call sinners, Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. Intercede for us at the right hand of the Father, Lord of mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you. 
we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who in the abasement of your Son have raised up a fallen world, fill your faithful with holy joy, for on those you have rescued from slavery to sin, you bestow eternal gladness. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the prophet Zechariah. The Lord says this, Rejoice, heart and soul, daughter of Zion. Shout with gladness, daughter of Jerusalem. See now, your king comes to you. He is victorious, he is triumphant, humble, and riding on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. He will banish chariots from Ephraim and horses from Jerusalem. The bow of war will be banished. He will proclaim peace for the nations. His empire shall stretch from sea to sea, from the river to the ends of the earth. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And the response to your psalm is, I will praise your name forever, my King and my God. I will praise your name forever, my King and my God. I will give you glory, O God, my King. I will bless your name forever. I will bless you day after day and praise your name forever. Response. I will praise your name forever, my King and my God. The Lord is kind and full of compassion, slow to anger, abounding in love. How good is the Lord to all, compassionate to all his creatures. Response. I will praise your name forever, my King, my King and my God. All your creatures shall thank you, O Lord, and your friends shall repeat their blessing. They shall speak of the glory of your reign and declare your might, O God. Response. I will praise your name forever, my, my King and my God. The Lord is faithful in all his words and loving in all his deeds. The Lord supports all who fall and raises all who are bowed down. Response. I will praise your name forever, my, my King and my God. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Your interests are not in the unspiritual, but in the spiritual, since the Spirit of God has made his home in you. In fact, unless you possessed the Spirit of Christ, you would not belong to him. And if the Spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead is living in you, then he who raised Jesus from the dead will give life to your own mortal bodies through his spirit living in you. So then, my brothers, there is no necessity for us to obey our unspiritual selves or to live unspiritual lives. If you do live in that way, you are doomed to die. But if by the spirit you put an end to the misdeeds of the body, you will live. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. Blessed, Blessed are you, Father, Lord, Lord of heaven and earth. You have revealed to little ones 
the mysteries of the kingdom. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Saint Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus exclaimed, I bless you, Father, Lord of heaven and of earth, for hiding these things from the learned and the clever, and revealing them to mere children. Yes, Father, for that is what it pleased you to do. Everything has been entrusted to me by my Father, and no one knows the Son except the Father, just as no one knows the Father except the Son, and those to whom the Son chooses to reveal Him. Come to me, all you who labor and are overburdened, and I will give you rest. Shoulder my yoke and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble of heart, and you will find rest for your souls. Yes, my yoke is easy, and my burden light. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord, Lord Jesus Christ. Christ. Dear brothers and sisters in Jesus, come to me, all you who labor and are overburdened. I will give you rest. These are the most uh, consoling and promising encouraging words that we find in the entire scripture. Today's gospel has got two parts. The first part is not uh, spoken to us. I think it is Jesus speaking to his father. And if you want to know a particular person, the best way to know that person is to know how he speaks, what he speaks. And so we can already get an insight into Jesus' nature, the way he talks to his Father. I bless you, Father, for hiding these things from the learned and the clever and revealing them to mere children. So Jesus' heart is overflowing with gratitude for what the Lord has done in and through Christ for the little ones, the children, who are his disciples. And for us today, perhaps all of us, my dear friends. The second part is the most important part, I suppose, and I want to divide that one sentence that we find, which gives us plenty of food for thought into four or five sections, if you don't mind. The first part is an invitation. Jesus says to us, come to me. The second part is all you, that is where those who are the ones who are invited. So invitees are in fact addressed they, specified they. We know from uh, to whom this invitation is directed to and because the next phrase immediately says about the conditions of the invitees, those who are weary and burdened. The next verse she says, I will give you rest which, of course, is a promise, which is the result, I suppose. But before that, I think there is an instruction given to us, learn from me, for I am gentle and humble of heart. So overall, when we look at that one particular Bible verse, we have plenty of um, things to go in depth. Uh, and so I just want to select um, a couple of those important points perhaps will help us to dwell on this phrase that can comfort us, lift us up. Let's look into the invitation, first of all, given by Jesus. Come to me. Among these three words, two words are most important. Come and me. Let's begin with the second one, me. Of course, Jesus here is talking about himself. And... Um, Let's look into ourselves and see, when we are burdened, when we are weary, where do we run after? Where do we go? Most of the time we go after other things, 
We go to other people rather than going to Jesus. And so Jesus in a particular way emphasizes that word, me, come to me. Jesus does not say, my dear friends, it is very interesting, come to the church or come to religion. Because sometimes we can go to church, but we don't go to Jesus. And that's what the difference is here. Jesus says, ah, come to me. The second word is come. And it is not just um, it's a, a sort of a walking and going. It is an act of faith from our part. A sort of embracing him on, on our part. It is putting our lives into his hands. It is bringing our desires, our wishes, all of that onto him. It is all about giving him a whole life. And so this particular first part of the invitation, come to me, speaks highly, first of all, of him, and secondly, of us who are. Next word, my dear friends, is all you. It's an open invitation. Many people don't think that Jesus, um, we are worthy to go to him because we don't deserve, we are not good enough. But that's not what Jesus is telling us here. It's not because we are good or we deserve that he's inviting us. And don't think we are sinful, we don't, we are not worthy to it. No, just because we got the invitation, we need to go to him. Next thing we look at, my dear friends, the condition, and that is why we come. Uh, because we are weary and we are burdened. When Jesus first talked to these words to the first century Jewish people, what are they burdened with? They were burdened with the, the legalism of the law. They were the Pharisees, Jesus said many times, you load it over all these things onto people and you don't lift a finger to help them out, to carry it through. And so it is a legalism that people are burdened with. When to worship, how to worship, which day to go to the synagogue, and which are the rules to follow, which way I need to wear this dress, and all that. So they were burdened with the legalism. That's the first thing we think of. Of course, that is there. But in our case, my dear friends, what are we burdened with? We are burdened with, perhaps, the temptation to sin. We are burdened with uh, the uh, sin that we stumble over again and again. There are people burdened with the constant um, worries about other people. The storms that come to our life over and over again. And so in many ways, I think we are weary and burdened. Next we come to the promise, which is a highlight and which is an important uh, result of going to Jesus. What does Jesus say? He said, I will give you rest for your souls. And it's important Jesus did not say, I will give you rest for your body. Because body is what you have. Soul is who you are. And so when you are burdened, your body is in burden and weary, you can go and have some rest. And so what Jesus says is, you will find rest for your souls. And Weariness of the soul, my dear friends, is that emotional weariness which we can get, we cannot get anywhere else. When Jesus makes a promise like that, and he uses the word rest, we think we got it. We think we know the word, what rest is all about. And um, we think rest is all about um, lying on an armchair, an armchair, taking the remote in our hands, and changing the channels, having a glass of wine, all that is rest. That's not the meaning of the word rest in Bible. Bible, my dear friend, speaks about uh, the first time what we find the word rest in Bible is Genesis chapter two, verse two. It, reads, it says there, thus the heavens and the earth were finished and all their multitude. And on the seventh day, God finished the work that he had done. And he rested on the seventh day from all the work that he had done. So God blessed the seventh day and hallowed it because on it 
God rested from all the work that he had done in creation. Bible, my dear friends, gives us an entirely different meaning to the word rest. Rest in biblical language means content, it is fulfillment, that kind of things. Why did God rest? Was he tired after creating so many things? No, not at all. God put that word rest into creation for us to know what rest is all about. It is on the seventh day when God had done everything what he wanted, he rested. He saw it and he is so content. He is, it is fulfilled. And he called that rest. So rest according to the Bible means to be fulfilled, to be content. King David, my dear friends, understood this more than anybody else. One of the famous Psalms that we all know by heart, Psalm 23, the first verse attempts to uh, give meaning to this word rest. The Lord is my shepherd. There is nothing I shall want. Because the Lord is taking care of all my things, I can rest in him. And that's the meaning of that particular phrase. And so I'm content, I'm fulfilled, I'm not restless, I'm not running here and there. That's what the important meaning of the word rest is. And so my dear friends, if that is the meaning of the word rest, let us go to one of the the smartest man lived on earth says about um, rest, Solomon for example. Solomon had all the money, <clears throat> all the power within his capacity. And he invested everything to find that satisfaction, that longing that he had. At the end he said, all is vanity. The only way we can find fulfilled, we can get this fulfillment we are looking for in our lives, is coming to Christ, not anywhere else. The first, uh, why is then being a Christian, my dear friends, we don't find that rest in our lives. We don't find that fulfillment and contentment in our life that we long for. It's not being part of coming to the church, automatically we get that rest. Not at all. Because uh, if you open Hebrews chapter two, uh, verse, uh, chapter four, verse one and two, we get to the reason why sometimes we don't rest, we don't uh, get a fulfilled in our life. It says like this, therefore, while the promise of entering the, his rest is still open, let us take care that none of you should seem to have failed to reach it. For indeed the good news came to us just as to them, but the message they heard did not benefit them, because they were not united by faith with those who listened. For those, for we who have believed entered that rest, just as God has said. My dear friends, in order to get into the background to the, this particular phrase, why we Christians don't find rest, we have to know the context in which uh, what Hebrews chapter three is talking about. He's talking about um, the Israelites coming into the promised land and under the leadership of Moses. And God told them, go and take possession of the land. It was a sort of an invitation to come and find rest in me, rest in the Lord, after being in the slavery for years and years. But what did they do? As they reached the borders, they uh, uh, sent spies into the land. They came back and said, oh, we can't take this land because there were so fiery creatures, huge creatures there. They will have us for lunch. And so none of those people, those who came up to the border of the promised land, entered into the land because they did not believe in the words of uh, God. And so we know that generation didn't go in. And they wandered and wandered, and it is much later, they go into the promised land. And that's the reason the author of Hebrews telling us, they who had the same privilege, same offer, promise, so they did not believe, and so they didn't go in. 
same way he connects that leadership of Moses to the leadership of Jesus. And he is bringing us to believe in the promise of Jesus so that we can find the rest. Remember, my dear friends, uh, when we say that this, um, uh, and so the rest is something not just, it doesn't mean that we don't have to work, don't have to do anything. Because the next episode, the next generation who went into the promised land, what did they do? They fought with the uh, uh, inmates of uh, the people of that land. They had to fight. Is that called a rest? Yes, it is, because the Lord is the one who is doing the battle. We have to do what we have to do. Trust, he will. And so, Lord made sure it is I who am fighting on your behalf. So this um, week's gospel, my dear friends, reminds us the importance of the most famous sentence that we find in the Bible, come to me, all you who labor and uh, over uh, weary, I will give you rest. May we have the promise of Jesus in our lives and may be able to have that contentment, fulfillment that we find in creation, in our own personal lives, and find, and find that rest in Christ rather than anywhere else, anything in this world. The battle belongs to the Lord. Trust me, and I am going to take care of you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I believe in one God, the Father, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible, I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, to God from to God, begotten and not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate from the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified on the Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is the Lord and glorified, who has spoken to the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and Apostolic Church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Dear friends, in Jesus Christ, the mystery of God has been revealed, not to the proud, but to the humble of heart. With a child's trust, let us turn to our Heavenly Father and ask for all we need. For the Church throughout the world, that she may always be a place of refuge for those who are poor, downtrodden, and marginalized. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear our prayer. For government leaders, that they may lighten the burdens of the poor and the disadvantaged. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for the priests who have left their homelands to minister in Australian diocese. May they have all the support they need to become happy and effective pastors for their parish communities. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for couples preparing for marriage and for those recently married. May their pledge of mutual love Bind them together in a union that stays strong, fruitful, and faithful. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who are bothered by troubles and anxieties, that they may find peace of mind. 
Lord, hear us. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for the recently deceased and for those whose anniversary of death occurs around this time. May God raise their mortal bodies to life in the spirit of Christ. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear our prayer. Holy God, you have made the mystery of your everlasting love known to us in Christ Jesus. Help us come and find rest in him, whose yoke is easy and whose burden is light. We ask this through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands, will become for us the bread of life. Blessed, Blessed be God, God forever. forever. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the wine and work of human hands will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands. For the praise of every name, for our good and the good of all his holy May this oblation dedicated to your name purify us, O Lord, and day by day bring our conduct closer to the life of heaven through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is really right and just. Our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for in you we live and move and have our being. And while in this body we not only experience the daily effects of your care, but even now possess the pledge of life eternal. For having received the first fruits of the Spirit, through whom you raised up Jesus from the dead, we hope for an everlasting share in the Paschal mystery. And so with all the angels, we praise you as in joyful celebration we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For well, this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is a chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, 
As we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church is spread throughout the world and bring it to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope, Timothy Archbishop, the United Sister Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also, brothers and sisters, who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection. Bring them and all the departed into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, the Blessed Joseph, Spouse, Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be guided to eternal life and praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the service command and formed by the divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the, kingdom, the power, and the, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said, the apostles, peace I give you. My peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your Church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with, and with your, your spirit. Let's offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I'm not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only to say a word, and my soul shall be healed. Taste it and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man who seeks refuge in him. Jesus, infinite love, truly God and truly man, my food and drink, I desire you and I wish to desire you with the fullness of love with which you are desired by the angels, the saints and their queen, the most holy Mary with the fullness of love of our own, own heart, and relying on your infinite mercy, which does not reject even the most miserable. Indeed, it seeks them out. I wish to receive you in every moment forever, and I wish to make as many acts of love and of adoration as you deserve, and for all the goals that are pleasing to you. Amen.
Let us pray. Grant, we pray, O Lord, that having been replenished by such great gifts, we may gain the prize of salvation and never cease to praise you through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Go forth to love and serve the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. be stripped away.